Hi guys, and welcome back to this masterclass tutorial all about Lightroom Classic. And today is episode two, Tone Curve Adjustment Layer. A great way of changing the exposure, but also adding in natural contrast and color grading your photos in Lightroom Classic. And I'm gonna start right now. So welcome back to this masterclass series all about Lightroom Classic. This is the five episodes all about basically mastering Lightroom. Episode one was about the basics panel. Episode two is all about the tone curve. Episode three is going to be about hue, saturation, and the luminance sliders. Episode four is all about color grading panel. And then lastly, episode five is about calibration. But today we're just focusing on the tone curve. Now the tone curve is an incredibly precise tool for a variety of reasons, but for a lot of people, it might seem overly complicated, but don't worry because although there is a lot of maths in it, you don't have to be a mathematician to use it. Now it is really handy when you're wanting to change either the exposure, you can add in contrast really naturally with it, but you can also color grade with it. Yes, it is quite complicated, but it is really precise. You'll be really accurate. So it might put a lot of beginners off, but that's why I've made this tutorial. So you can add it to your editing workflow because once you've added it, you won't believe how much this particular panel can do. Now, if you wanna to skip to the part that will help you out most, go ahead to the timestamps that you can see available here, but obviously stick to the very end so you can master the tone curve. Right guys, so the very first thing we'll do is just simply go ahead and open up Lightroom Classic. And now I've got ahead and open up these three photos which we're going to be using in this tutorial. So we've got photo one, we've got photo two, which is a gradient, and then we've got photo three. And what we want to do is firstly go ahead and open up the tone curves or all of the sliders found within Lightroom. Now you can find these. If you go ahead over to the develop panel found right at the top, then what you want to do is go ahead and as you can see, got all of these ones. We're going over quite a few of them in this masterclass, but the one we focus on today is called the tone curve. Now inside the tone curve, when you open it up, you've got basically this box with a horizontal or 45 degree line. You've got some dots on the top here. And then in this particular section, you've also got some sliders with the word region on it. Now, how it works is basically uses that line, hence the name curve, and then it overlays it onto a histogram. Now, a histogram is a really interesting thing to understand. It's a mathematical way of measuring exposure. Now, you've got two histograms. You've got the one found within the tone curve, but you've also got, if you've got it at the top here, make sure you've got it open, a histogram here. Now, if you hover over, you'll notice the letters start to change. Now, at the bottom here, or on the left-hand side, you've got what called blacks. Then you've got shadows, you've got exposure or midtones, then you've got highlights, then you've also got whites. Now, if you watch the previous video on the basics panel, you'll see that is replicated here as well. So you've got your exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. And that is exactly the same within the tone curve, but the tone curve, you can be a lot more precise. Now, the most important thing we're going to be looking at in the tone curve is these five buttons here at the top. First one you've got is called the parametric, which is probably the easiest one to understand. Then you've got the point curve. Then you've got three channels. And obviously we, as we all know, how our eyes work, how monitors work, how photos work, even how camera sensors work, it works off the three channel basis, red, green, and blue. And the mixture between these colors basically makes all colors within the color spectrum. And there's, there's basically how you can change these channels. So you've got your red channel, you've got your green channel, and you've got your blue channel. But let's firstly start off with the parametric slider here. Now, this is really probably the easiest way to use the tone curve. It's probably the most basic way, and it's pretty much, it's a really good way of adding in contrast. Now, we have got two histograms here. We've got the histogram at the top, and we've got a histogram overlaid within our tone curve. Now, bear in mind that every time we, let's say we go ahead and change, so we click and drag upwards, you will notice that the histogram at the top here live changes. So if we drag it down, as you can see, it's changing. If we drag it up, as you can see, it's changing. But you'll notice the histogram in here doesn't change. Now, the reason for that is it's like a, think of it like a snapshot, basically what it was like before we go ahead and use the tone curve. Now, let's say we go ahead and open up the basics panel and we create some changes. If you go and have a look at the tone curve, you'll see it moved. And that's because it works on an adjective formula. So what it means is basically anything you do to any other channel will change that histogram's snapshot. So if you go ahead and change the basically exposure before you go ahead and use the tone curve, you're basically working off the premise that it's working off an adjective. So it's working off 
multiplying these kind of points together. So anything you do in the basics panel will automatically change anything that you do in any other sliders, including the tone curve. So you're basically adding stuff to that formula. So it, think of it like blending mode within Photoshop. You're blending multiple layers and basically merging it into a single kind of color grade or a single preset as it were within Lightroom. So let's go ahead and just basically right click on that. And what we can do is basically reset region. Now, right hand side is basically your bright points. And then as we go further down, we're dropping down to the shadows and our black tones. Now the easiest way, Basically, all you need to do is if you want to brighten a region, simply click and drag upwards. And as you can see, we're creating a curve, hence the name curves adjustment layer. Then what we can do is drag it downwards. Now, the best way to add in natural amount of contrast is simply create what is called an S curve. So you can go ahead and bring basically the highlights up and bring the shadows down. And as you can see, the sliders at the bottom, if you're more interested in using sliders, we can use those as well. Basically, there's no right or wrong answer in this particular case. But if you go ahead and bring up the highlights or you can bring down the darks, bring down the shadows, you can see we're live changing it on our photo here. So it's up to you if you want to use these sliders or if you want to use the curve here within the parametric curve is completely up to you. Now, you can also change in this section here what is classed as basically what part of the photo it is. So the bottom here, we've got our basically our blacks, we've got our shadows, we've got our highlights, and we've got our whites. And what we can do is drag these around, and basically you can determine what is black and what is white in the photo. Now, obviously, this photo is quite dark. So what we can do is increase the amount of midtones. And what this will do is you can see it will actually change how the photo is projected in what part. So you can be Basically, you can tell Lightroom what is a highlight or what is a shadow simply by moving these around. Now, if you see if you've made a mistake, all you need to do is right click and you can go ahead and basically reset region. And what we'll do is reset it for us. Now, this is a very basic way of basically using the curves or the tone curve adjustment layer. It's not the way I use it. I don't really like the parametric because there's not much you can, you can't really change much with it. You, it's great for getting an understanding, but I personally use the point curve because you can be incredibly precise with it. So let's go ahead and leave the parametric alone. Let's go ahead over to the point curve. Now the point curve basically works the same, but you are in control of where the points are found. In the parametric, as you can see, there are no points. You go ahead and drag it up. You can see that curve has no points on it. We've basically just made a curve. But in the points curve, if you go ahead and make a point, you can see that point stays there and you can drag that point up. You can also drag it right. You can also drag it left. So you've got basically full control over up, down, left, and right, where if we go to the parametric, you can only drag it up and you can only drag it down. Now, why is that important? Well, it's all about your input and output value. And that is basically how the point goes. That's why I was saying it's a bit mathematical because it's all working off exposure points. Now you've got 255 points in a photo. Zero is basically black and 255 is basically white. And any point in between is a type of color or a type of gray. So if we go ahead and go back to that point curve, you can see we've got that point there. And what we've done is we've selected the input point of 163. Now think of that as a light gray. Then we're turning that light gray into the output of 159. Now 159 is smaller than 163. So what we've done is we've made it darker. We've made that input value darker to the point where it's at the output value. Now that is a very handy way or a fundamental way of basically how it works. Uh, you've got the input here and then you've got your output. Now obviously you can select as many points as you want. You can go ahead and add in 100 points if you want to. But do bear in mind that the more points you add, the more complicated it starts to become. Now let me go ahead and just quickly go to photo two here to basically give you an understanding of how it can mess up. Because using the tone curve is great, but you can easily by accident make a serious mistake. So this is a really basically simple formula. This is just a gradient from 100% white to 100% black. And you can see that by the histogram. Basically, it's a straight line with no color in it. Now, let's say we want to go ahead and create an S curve. So we want to go ahead and create basically natural contrast. Let's go ahead, drag that up. And let's go ahead and drag this section down. So we're dragging up the highlights and we're reducing the shadows. As you can see, we've darkened the shadows. So we've 
basically chosen the input of 67 and we've outputted it at 52. And then if we go ahead and select the highlights, we've got the input value of 182 and we're outputting it as 201. So we're increasing the value. And as you can see, it looks quite nice. We've got a good amount of white, we've got a good amount of black, and we've basically shortened the gradient in between the two. And that's what basically adding in contrast does. But let's go ahead and add in a point in the middle and let's drag it over to the right. Now, as you can see, what has happened here is we've basically increased the amount of black, turned it into gray, and then we've got this white tone. But as you can see, we've lost a lot of the information in the whites. And that's because we have clipped that information. Can you see where that line goes curved and then basically goes completely straight? All that information is clipped. So basically anything beyond this point here is just completely white and there is no information. If you go ahead and click J on our keyboard, this shows us any information that's either too white or too dark. You can see that there is a large amount of red, which is overexposed, and only a small amount of blue, which is underexposed. Now, if we go even further and we bring this point here further down from this point, what can happen, and let's go crazy, you can see that we've completely messed this gradient. So it goes dark, so it goes white, then it goes to this gray, then it gets brighter again, then it gets goes really black, and then it goes back to gray again, and then it goes to black again. And you can see how that is replicated. So you can see just by dragging it ever so slightly, literally just a couple points, it's gone absolutely berserk. And this is why, when I mean it can be quite complicated because you can easily mess up a photo. Now, let's say we've taken this tone curve. Obviously, it's, it's just replicated in a gradient. If we had went to this photo and did the same thing, so let's drag that down. You can see we've added blue, it looks magenta. It looks like you've got something wrong with your eyes when you've looked at this photo because all we've done is we've just simply made a small change to basically completely ruin the photo. Now, you can create quite interesting results. If this is something you want to go for, then go ahead with it. But obviously, we know that this is wrong. There is no green in the sky. So we know that all of this is completely wrong. So what we can do is right click and basically delete all of our control points. So let's go ahead and just simply reset the channel there, bring it back to our nice straight line. So do bear in mind that using the point curve Although it's great, be very, very subtle with it. Don't add too many points because it can sometimes be a little bit overcomplicated. Now, something that's really handy is you've basically got presets, I think basically is the term, found within the tone curve, which can help you understand what's a good way of adding in natural exposure because that's really why the point curve exists. So what we can do is go to the point curve here, go to linear, and we've got basically two buttons. We've got medium contrast and strong contrast. So let's go ahead and click contrast. As you can see, it's automatically added in these points, which is really handy. So you can see we've got the input value of 32 and the output value of 16. Now, a really cool effect that I like adding to my photos is adding in this matte effect. Matte basically means we're removing all black from the photo and creating this kind of off gray black color. And it looks really, really nice on some photos. If you go ahead and watch this video here, you'll see that I've actually used it at, in a practical way. And it can create this really cool effect, especially when you're applying it to urban style photos. How to create that is all to do with your input and output value. So let's go ahead and select input of zero. Now input of zero, as I mentioned previously, is completely black. So let's go ahead and increase the value of that to something that's more positive. So let's say we've got zero. Let's go and increase that value to let's say 15. So what we've done is we've increased the input value from zero to 15. So now there is no more black in this photo and you can see that replicated in our histogram here. So if I do the before, you can see that histogram has ever so slightly changed. Then if I change that back to the output of 15, you can see that has moved. So it's a great way of basically creating this really cool matte effect. And it's not possible basically with any other slider found within Lightroom Classic. You're gonna have to use this point curve. Now that's the real understanding of how you can basically add in exposure, but also change the overall contrast of your photo. And it's a really good way of adding in natural amount of contrast. Again, follow that S curve technique and you can add in and depending on the how much how extreme you are, or depending on how much contrast you add in. But that's not just what the tone curve does. It also works off of color grading as well. Now I don't use it much for color grading, but it, you can create really cool effects with it. So let's go ahead and go over to photo three. Now what we're going to be using is the red green and blue channels. Now, to understand how colors work within the photo, we just need to quickly look at this graph. Now, all colors are, of 
they've got their opposites or their complementary color. And that is really the fundamental of how primary and secondary colors work within photos. You've got your primary colors, which are red, green, and blue, but then you've got your secondary colors, which is cyan, magenta, and yellow. And this is how we're going to be adding and subtracting colors from the point curves adjustment layer. Now, obviously, if you go ahead and add in red, you're also indirectly removing its secondary color, which is cyan. So if you want to add more cyan, the process would be simply remove red. And that is how to use color grading within the tone curves adjustment layer. So let's go ahead and use it in a practical way. So let's say we've got our red here, we've got our green here, and we've got our blue here. Now, what's something I love about Lightroom is it actually overlays the colors of our primary and secondary. So we've got our reds, we've got, as you can see, got reds in the top and then at the bottom you can see a cyan then we've got green and again green at the top magenta at the bottom and then lastly we've got blue which again blue and then our secondary color which is yellow now you'll also notice if we go ahead and click from one two and three our histogram changes as well and if you look at the top here you can see there are some overlays with red green and blue and you can also see some other colors involved here as well these are our primary and secondary colors overlaid on our histogram so you can actually see a snapshot of what the red channel looks like a snapshot of what the green channel looks like and then a snapshot of what the blue channel looks like and again very similar to the point curve you have got your input and output values so let's go ahead and color grade this photo here now it's great i really like this photo but let's go ahead and add in a little bit of color contrast it's a good way of adding in some colors so let's go ahead i want to go ahead and add in some more cyan colors to the shadows create this more cyan and orange kind of color tone to our photo and basically using the tone curve is a great way to create this look so what we can do is basically add in an s curve so we want to add more red into the highlights so we're going to go ahead and add some red in here and then we're going to go ahead and remove some red by adding in cyan to the shadows here so we go ahead and balance it like so then what we're going to do is go to our green channel now there's a lot of green you'll notice in the background and i don't really like that so what we're going to do is we're going to remove that green so we're going to go to our highlights here i'm going to bring that down in the highlights but as you can see it's added it all over the place so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and bring it up in the shadows then what we're going to do is go to blue here. I'm going to go ahead and add in some blue to the highlights and bring in some yellow found within the shadows. Now you can move these around until you're happy. I quite like very subtle changes in here. So again, it's, you can impact it quite strongly. So I think I'm going to add in more magenta into the shadows and add a little bit more green to the highlights there. Again, very small changes. As you can see, the input value of 182, I'm changing it to 185. So very, very small changes make a very big impact. So again, it might seem quite basic, but it is very, very powerful. Now, obviously we can see the histogram, we can see where we're changing. So obviously the sky here, uh, we've got obviously this little section of point here, but most of the photo falls in the mid-tone. So that's where we're selecting this point here. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring that down, add a little bit more magenta into the actual shadows here that we can see, basically in this mountain mountain range here. Now, now I'm finding it's a little bit dark, so I'm gonna do is go over to our exposure here, and I'm just gonna go ahead and add in some brightness into the highlights. I'm gonna bring these exposure points down here, but not by too much. So I'm just mainly affecting the highlights here. So I'm bringing that up a little bit more, adding in some natural contrast to this photo. So as you can see, we've made the changes to the red channel, we've made changes to the green channel, and we've made changes to the blue channel. Now what I can do is show you the before and after of the tone curve. Now if you go over to this little small button here, this basically turns or toggles it on and off. So if we do before, and we do after. And as you can see, we've made a really cool color grading effect. And all we've done is we've just simply used the point curve in exposure, the point curve in the red, green, and blue channel. So as you can see, that is basically how you can use it to change your exposure, change the contrast, but also actually color grade your photos. And obviously do bear in mind that it's a very, very powerful tool. So be very, very careful when it comes to using the point curve. And to get yourself started, I highly recommend using the parametric curves because it's a little bit more simple to use and you can get the fundamentals out of the way. Then I would recommend jumping into the point curve. But as you can see, if you go ahead and add this to your virtual professional workflow, you can really create some very interesting results. Brilliant, and there we go, guys. So there is my masterclass tutorial, episode two, 
all about the tone curves adjustment layer. As you can see, it's a very precise tool, especially the point curve tool. You could be really precise on your input and output, and you can create really cool and quite creative results with it. I must say, I use it all the time when I wanna create a matte effect or when I'm trying to increase or decrease the types of colors found in either the mid-tones or highlights or even shadows. So it's a really, really precise tool and something I highly recommend adding it to your editing workflow. Yes, it is a little bit complicated to get started, but once you've added it and once you kind of understand the fundamentals, then it is a really handy tool to know. Again, guys, if you want to like, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel, it really, really does help me out. And if you're interested in video, I've got a brand new channel on YouTube called Video Fever, which I'll go over Premiere Pro tutorials as well as video tips and tricks. So if you are interested in video or you wanted to get into video, go ahead and subscribe to the app YouTube channel as well. Again, guys, I've been James for Photo Fever, and I'll catch you guys next time.